At the absolute core of Paper F3 is the business of double entry bookkeeping and the debits and credits. A lot of people taking Paper F3 have already kind of seen this stuff already, but if you have, there's a real danger in this because it's a very good idea to make sure you are comfortable with the real basics and not just make assumptions about your prior knowledge. In many ways, if you've not seen it before, it actually finds people often do really actually quite well if they've not seen it before because they're doing it completely from scratch. Okay, we have this idea of debits and credits. The terms debits and credits themselves are completely arbitrary. Uh, the starting point is probably to say, let's say debit, well if you're looking at assets and liabilities, an asset and liability scenario, in other words, something in the statement of financial position, a debit basically is an asset. Now the opposite of a debit is called completely arbitrarily a credit. This was invented by a monk over 500 years ago and really it's kind of, it would have been easier instead of saying debit or you know, debit in Italian accent if you just said assets instead and then the opposite of asset is a credit as a liability. It would be easier to pick up the rules that way. Well basically a liability is a credit because it's the opposite of an asset. So your anchor point in understanding the rules of double entry is to say a debit is an asset in the statement of financial position, therefore a credit is the opposite. Okay, if you've got more assets in a, as a result of a transaction, let's say for example you get paid your salary at the end of the month, that means you've got an increase in debits. So a debit is either an asset or an increase in those assets. So you've got an increase in the debit, so you know to increase something you add something more to it, so debit assets, and that gives an explanation. Well the idea of double entry bookkeeping is that everything happens because there's an explanation for it. So let's say, for example, if your salary has, sorry, if your bank account has gone up, that's because of the fact you've been paid your salary. Well, so therefore that's debit bank. There must be a, cre a credit explanation for that because you've got the idea everything balances. So therefore we're going to say credit income. Now, an early mistake that people make with this stuff is to assume that there's a system of logic, first of all, and you're going to see it and click, it's all going to fall into place. It doesn't. It's like driving a car. The theory of driving a car seems simple enough, but you're having to do several things at the same time, and you only really get that by practice. And if you've learned to drive a car, um, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, and if you've not, I'm afraid you don't know what I'm talking about, but this is something that's going to come to you in the future probably. The first time you actually learn to drive a car, you think, I I'm expected to drive in a straight line and change gear all at the same time, and it's just plain hard, even though the theory of it's actually quite straightforward. It's exactly the same with that with bookkeeping. You may feel that you've made lots of mistakes here. That's fine. As long as you understand your mistake and you go back and you understand the reason of it, that's all good. Okay, You get this by practice, not by suddenly seeing it. Most people who think they suddenly see it, actually, my experience is they find they've got it by some slightly false logic and it kind of comes unwound a little bit later on. So an early mistake as well is to kind of get into this idea of, you know, debits are good and credits are bad, or the other way around. It's actually not true. Um, it really isn't because of the fact that if you imagine, for example, you've got more asset than you had before, in other words, that's debit, bank account, there is an explanation for that, which is a credit. So that credit, if you like, is a good credit. Okay, if you've got a liability, that's kind of a bad credit because of the fact that's something where cash is going to have to pay out in the future. So if you kind of take a look, I mean, this is probably what we shouldn't do, but debits arbitrarily called debits and further arbitrarily abbreviated to DR, credit, rather more obviously called CR. If we have the statement of financial position, well, debits are good news and credits are bad news. In the statement of comprehensive income, it's the other way around because if we're saying... The statement of comprehensive income's function, and we've looked at this previously on the course already, the function of the statement of comprehensive income is to explain where the assets and liabilities came from or went to. So if you've got an increase in an asset, so that's debit asset, the explanation has to be a credit because otherwise the thing doesn't balance. The idea is, the idea of double entry bookkeeping is everything balances, everything happens for a reason. If you like, everything has an explanation. So if we're saying debit statement of financial position debit assets the credit must be some source of income so that's a good credit let's take another example well let's say for example you've got um, some new expense being recognized so you know you go into a shop and you buy something and you hand over the goods and they ask you for money at that moment what you have is a liability okay which basically means you've got a decrease in net assets well, an explanation is of a decrease in net asset by definition is an expense. So therefore, that's debit statement of comprehensive income with an expense and credit statement of financial position. They're both kind of unhappy stories. So 
in that situation, it's really not true that debits are good and credits are bad. The thing that you want to hold on to, I can't kind of stress this enough, because it really is just about doing this a few times and getting familiar with the underlying kind of techniques, is debits in the statement of financial position, they're assets, they are a good thing. Okay, now if you can produce the summary table that we've got on the next page here, this is what you want to do before really you start to apply it to actually looking at any numbers. What debits mean in the statement of financial position? Okay, first of all, is basically a debits mean either uh, a increase in net assets, I'm sorry there's a typing error there, that should be decrease, okay, or a decrease in liabilities, both of those are good things because they are an increase in net assets, or a credit is an increase in liabilities or a decrease in assets. So for example, if you spend some money uh, that's going to reduce your bank account, you're going to be decreasing your assets because the assets basically in the bank account have gone down, the bank owes you less money. If you're in the unhappy situation of owing the bank money before you even start, you actually have a liability, so what you've done there is increased liabilities. Okay, so, okay, can't stress this enough. Start off as this is a kind of two by two grid in your mind, first of all, but actually be able to produce a thing on paper and say that assets are basically debits to assets and therefore credits are either an explanation of where assets came from or alternatively an explanation of where li the, the position of liabilities. So if you have this, basically, the debits in statement of financial position, what's the opposite of that is a liability, so therefore that's a credit. Okay. If you've got statement of comprehensive income, which is what we're looking at here, this is basically the kind of because story. So in other words, for example, if you have a de debit to asset because you've got an increase in assets, the reason is you've got an item of income, something's made you richer. It's possible, of course, you might say, for example, borrow money in which case you'll be saying debit to bank and, well, there's got to be a credit somewhere. The answer is, if you've borrowed money initially, that's because you owe money to somebody else. So that could be an increase in assets because there's an increase in liabilities. It will always work. Okay. Now, if you've never come across this, this is, before, this is going to seem very fast and probably completely and utterly confusing. And to be honest, there's really no way of kind of going through that except to say, anchor point of the logic of this, think of a debit as an asset. Okay, a credit is an opposite of a debit, or the opposite of an asset is a liability. So build up this first statement of financial position picture first of all. The next stage is to recognise statement of comprehensive income is a list of because statements in effect. So for example, if the company's net assets have gone up in a period because they've made sales, then you've got debit bank, credit, sales revenue. So therefore, in the statement of comprehensive income, credits, completely arbitrary name, are a good thing. Okay, if you can produce that table, and you kind of are happy producing that table, first of all, then that's where you want to then come back to the next recording, or basically progress to some of the examples. If you're not happy producing that table, first of all, to be honest, don't try to apply it, because even if it seems a little bit uncomfortable and you think, who the hell came up with this stuff, and uh, why did they come up with this stuff, I promise you it will become easier. Double entry bookkeeping is extremely useful for producing accounts, and it's an extremely, extremely useful analytical tool for finding out where people have done things wrong um, in the future. That's a very, very, very good, useful tool, particularly in things like audit exams. Okay, go through this table and basically make sure you're comfortable with it, and then we'll take a look at some of the examples.